right, guys, welcome back. Welcome to my seventh installment of my Illustrator CC tutorial on how to illustrate or vectorize a car. So let's just jump into the wheels today. It's been a long awaited video. So we are going to start by creating a new layer and we are going to call this layer the front wheel. Now what I normally like to do when I start to draw a wheel is I will take my ellipse tool because it's better than trying to create a, a smooth circle or, or ellipse using the pen tool alone. It always is look, gonna look wonky. So I start by using the ellipse tool to kind of go over the barrel of these wheels. If you're familiar with like three piece wheels, you know that there's a barrel and a face to the wheel. So those are how, that's how I concentrate my illustrating. So I always start by using the ellipse tool to kind of outline the barrel of the wheel. These lines and shapes also serve as perfect reference points to when I'm drawing the face of the wheel and all of the details. This way I know if my points on the face and details of the wheel line up with the barrel of the wheel. So now I'm just going to assign some arbitrary colors to these four circles. And since this wheel is turned facing the camera, we can kind of right align all of these ellipses. And I think we'll add one more for the rotor, just to give us a reference point of where the rotor is. Since it's not a wheel that's facing you directly and there is some angle to it, you kind of can't center everything up like you normally would. So we just need those reference points for now and we can alter them later. So these are very complicated wheels and the way I approached drawing these was to just draw every little shape that I could see. I figured if I drew each shape rather than trying to connect a whole, a whole bunch together, I'd probably end up with a better result with the amount of detail that is in these wheels. So let's go ahead and start by just using our pen tool to outline and draw different shapes that kind of have that same tone. So these first shapes here will all have the same color tone, except for this guy. We'll switch that over to fill, and then we'll take these other four that are very similar in color, and then we'll use our eyedropper tool to come in and just select a random color for now. So back to the pen tool. And again, just trying to create as many shapes as possible, as many paths as possible to get the amount of detail. As you can see, as I start to outline these, you can see where they start to form shapes and there's a lot of them, even with the highlights and the shadows. So these are all very dark. We'll just continue to outline these shadow areas and that looks good. So we'll select all of those by holding down shift and clicking each shape and then we'll switch that over to a fill as well. So now moving on to this path, which will be similar to the other one that has this highlight right in the center. So we can use our eyedropper tool once that shape is complete and so select a color for that highlight. Now, turning off the background layer and then turning on all of the ellipses we drew in the beginning, and that doesn't, that doesn't look like I, I'd want it. I mean, that looks like a mess. So the only way to fix this with where we are now is to just keep going. So don't be discouraged when you go to check on your work and it doesn't look like what you thought it would look like. Just keep going. It, the, the longer you push through it, you'll see that this wheel requires hundreds and hundreds of different paths to get the amount of detail that matches the rest of the car. So just keep drawing and keep pursuing and moving forward. Now 
Now we're gonna draw the face of the wheel, which is the main shape or the shape that is always most recognized by viewers. This can be one full shape. If I need to add any highlights or shadows later, I can do that on top of this path. But for right now, I'd like to just get the entire face of this wheel drawn so that we can start to add the rest of the details of the highlights and the shadows and like the lug nuts and the center cap. All right, that looks pretty good. So now we're gonna come into our layers palette, which I have enlarged over here, and we're just going to name this particular path the face. That way, if we wanna add stuff either on top of the face of the wheel or keep things hidden behind the face of the wheel, now in my layers palette, it's easy to distinguish which path I need to move ones uh, others above or below. So once that main big shape is drawn, I usually name it face. And all you need to do to do that is to just double click and rename it. Okay, so now that is starting to come together. It still looks like a big jumbled mess. So you'll need to come in with your selection tool, your direct selection tool, and just start adjusting these points and paths just so that they start to line up a little bit better. It's hard when you're drawing from a photo and then translating it sometimes. Sometimes things don't exactly line up as you see them in the image and a lot of that's because of pixels. So just be sure before you get too far to go through and kind of clean up your layer and clean up the paths and that'll save you time um, of doing it all at the very end. So now we'll come in we're just gonna keep drawing. Again, I, like I said before, this is made up of hundreds of different paths, so we just need to keep at it and be persistent. Using a combination of the pen tool to draw the shape and then the eyedropper tool to select that fill color and then just keep moving on into the next. All right, let's start drawing the lug nuts. So we'll go back to the ellipse tool for one, can't really use the ellipse tool on this one, so we'll use the pen tool to draw our shape. And these can be black. You don't need to have a specific color as long as they're the deepest of black. Now to get that ellipse to move into the position I want it, like that, I'm holding down the space bar before I release the mouse and release the shape. So once you click and drag your ellipse out, you can hold the space bar and place that ellipse exactly where you need it. All right, let's draw a couple shadows and a couple of highlights. Since the light, the light source is above and facing down on the wheel, we wanna make sure that we have a couple of highlights here at the bottom and we'll select all of those and assign them the same color. Come back in and adjust those so that it all lines up with the face of the wheel. We'll select all of those again and make them brighter so that they stand out and have a little bit more contrast. This is where you pretty much don't need to go back to the photo of the wheel when assigning colors. If you want your highlights to stand out a little bit more, make them a different color, make them brighter. So now I'm just going through the ellipses that we used for the barrel and making sure that they all lined up with the other pieces that I drew. All right, a few more adjustments later and we wanna make sure that that ellipse we drew for the rotor can be seen Just checking over your work is always a good time to stop and check over your work and make sure your paths are lining up. Now we'll add a little bit of a highlight on the tire. I normally don't add a whole lot of details on the tires, but I do plan to start, especially with one of my upcoming projects. 
So we'll assign that a color and then move on to whatever else we see next. This wheel was interesting one to draw. It was kind of random. I didn't necessarily work in the exact order that I always do. And it required a lot of different pieces to make it all come together. So now we will create the center cap for this wheel. We'll use the ellipse tool here with black in the center and a bright stroke to mimic that chrome. Same thing again here. And because this wheel is turned, the circle isn't exactly perfect. So don't necessarily try to copy and paste your shapes here. Just, just draw them as you see them. And that'll allow you to get the perspective just right. So now we're gonna open up our text tool and we are just gonna type out BMW because I don't wanna draw those letters, they're really small. And if I draw them, they won't look that great. So we're just gonna go ahead and type them out. Choose a nice sans serif font that has a big enough family that can give me a very bold or a black. There we go, Avenir is a pretty good font to use. So now that we have our B, let's just copy and paste that. And in order to not use the font, I'd like to create outlines and turn these into shapes. So to do that, let's use Shift Command O to create outlines for each one of these letters. Now there is no font associated with these shapes. They have now become paths. I do this also so that if I move to another computer that might not necessarily have this font, now that it's a shape, I don't need to worry about carrying my fonts with me. So now I'm just gonna go in and adjust the letters using kind of like a free, tr uh, free transform method. Now that they're smaller, I need a little bit more body to these letters, so we'll just add a stroke and then bring that stroke down to 0.25 since it's so small. All right. And it's not gonna be exact, but it's so small on the illustration anyway, you just need it to be believable. And that's believable. So now let's add a shadow for the, for that's being cast by the body of the car. So up in that wheel well. So we'll do a black gradient, black on both sides with one side's opacity set to zero. And then we'll just use our gradient tool to draw that gradient through that shape and see what's really believable. Now that shape we drew earlier for the highlight on the tire was way too bright. So let's drop the opacity on that to about 30%. It's still there and it looks a lot more believable. We are almost done. We are in the home stretch, guys. So now I'm just going through and I'd like to add the shadows that are being cast by the wheel on the rotor. I just want to make sure that I have those on there as well. And that won't make the, that'll make the wheel that'll add some depth. It won't seem so flat just by adding these little shadows. So once we draw those shapes, we'll select them all because they're gonna be at the top of our layer. So shift, click each shape to select it all, and then we'll go over to our layers palette, and we will take all of those shapes, and we are going to drag them all the way to the bottom. Look how many paths we've drawn. Such a huge layer. So we're gonna keep dragging these all the way to the bottom, and we're gonna set them right on top of the barrel, the ellipses. So once you turn those on and everything off, you can see that those shapes are now a shadow that's being cast onto the rotor. So let's zoom out, look at our work. It looks all right, it looks pretty good. I think the only thing left to do is come and adjust this shape that we're using for a shadow, adjust the gradient so it's a little bit more believable. And I'm good with that. I think that looks great. This wheel was built with hundreds of different paths and the rear wheel will be very similar to drawing this front wheel. I'm not gonna cover the rear wheel in this tutorial for the sake of time, 
but it is basically the exact same methodology. Starting with ellipses and creating the barrel and then drawing the face and the highlights and the shadows. I'd like to thank all of my viewers that have made it this far. There will be one more tutorial to clean up odds and ends on this BMW illustration and then we will move on to new and fun exciting techniques. This wheel took approximately one hour and 50 minutes to draw based off of my screen recordings. So you can see how it's been a bit of a challenge getting the entire tutorial in under 16 minutes because I don't want to bore you guys. I'd like to apologize for the amount of time it took to get this wheel tutorial out as my job was affected by the pandemic. I'd also like to thank my new friend Pranjal from India who's helping me out getting my Adobe stuff back on track and able to produce this video for you. If you're interested in more Illustrator CT tutorials and other car related nonsense, consider subscribing. If you liked this video, please give me a big thumbs up. It really does help and I'll catch you guys in the next one.